For at TV, the world is thinking. What happens if John McCain wins? Well, <laughs> you said that, I didn't. Uh, well, but we have a clue. We have a clue, a very important clue, because on May 6, John McCain gave a speech about the future of the Supreme Court as he sees it. And, and I think it's very significant the date on which he gave it. Now, I'm sure it's hard to remember right now, but May 6 was the day of the Indiana and North Carolina Democratic primaries. It was the day that the Democratic nomination was really settled. And it was a day where the political attention of the country was pretty well focused on Indiana and North Carolina. And I think it is significant that McCain chose to give his speech on that day because the Republican Party has, it appears to me, moved so far to the right so fast that it has left much of the American people behind right now because this, when you see what McCain said and how he said it, you see that he, he is a smart enough politician to know that he can't say explicitly what he means about the Supreme Court because the public by and large does not support what he wants to do on the Supreme Court. And I'd like to conclude by reading two excerpts from that speech and try to translate from the code in which it's written what he's really saying. The first excerpt. For decades now, some federal judges have taken it upon themselves to pronounce on rule on, and rule on matters that were never intended to be heard in courts or decided by judges with a presumption that would have amazed the framers of our Constitution and legal reasoning that would have mystified them, federal judges today issue rulings and opinions on policy questions that should be decided democratically. Now, what's he talking about there? Roe versus Wade, that's what he's talking about. He's saying if states want to ban abortion, the state legislature should be allowed to do it. But why doesn't he say, as he used to say, well, I'm just for overturning Roe versus Wade? because the public doesn't want to see Roe versus Wade overturned. So he speaks in this code about policy questions being decided democratically, and the people who are, know, the, the, the people who, who he is trying to appeal to the cons in the conservative movement, they say, oh, I know what he's talking about, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't come right out and say it. Now, the second excerpt is even more um, elliptical, if I may. Sometimes the express will of the voters is disregarded by federal judges, as in a 2005 case concerning an aggravated murder in the state of Missouri. As you might recall, the case inspired a Supreme Court opinion that left posterity with a lengthy discourse on international law, the constitutions of other nations, the meaning of life, and evolving standards of decency. These meditations were in the tradition of penumbras, emanations, and other airy constructs the court has implied over the years as poor substitutes for clear and rigorous constitutional reasoning. The effect of that ruling in the Missouri case was familiar too. When it finally came to the point, the result was to reduce the penalty, disregard our constitution, and brush off the standards of the people themselves and their elected representatives. Now, what's peculiar about that passage? It doesn't say what the case is about. Well, what, what was this case from Missouri? Well, the case was called Roper v. Simmons. And it was a case about a 17-year-old boy who was sentenced to be executed for murdering a neighbor. And Justice Kennedy wrote an opinion for the court that said, we are no longer going to execute children in the United States. And he wrote, about the stark reality that the United States is the only country in the world that continues to give official sanction to the juvenile death penalty. Kennedy noted that the only country to execute juvenile offenders since 1990, besides the United States, were Iran, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Nigeria, Nigeria, Congo, and China. And Justice Kennedy said, we are not gonna be in that group anymore. And, you know, 
even in the United States, which is a pretty tough on crime country, it's not very popular to say you're in favor of executing children. But so McCain wrote in, in this very elliptical way about this opinion, but that's what the opinion was about, and that's what the stakes are in this election. 